Through accepting Christ, through applying the blood of the Lamb, you'll become the common wealth of Israel, which means the Lord will circumcise your heart so you will love him and want to follow his ways. You'll become fellow citizens and members of God's household, no longer strangers and foreigners, able to observe the festivals as a rightful citizen. And if we persevere, when Yeshua returns, we will be given a new name because we will be in his household just like the newborn received a new name on the eighth day, signifying a new beginning in abundance. It's the commonwealth, it's citizenship, a citizen of what nation? Israel, you're an Israelite, that's what it is. And some of this terminology, it might sound very for, you know, foreign, but we must define biblical terminology by the Bible, okay? So we're gonna look at some the final and uh, defining biblical terms and if I said to people in this room <clears throat> January okay if I said to everyone in this room January what comes to mind cold <laughs> slippy winter you know <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> icy if I said January to someone who lived in South Africa Africa though what would they think yeah. they would think warm summer barbecues it's the same word different context but both are still true okay and this is what we need to understand when we're reading um you know when we're hearing these terms a, a jew an israelite a gentile okay so let's uncover these worldly definitions so we're going to look at the worldly definitions first to see what the world says a jew is okay so in a worldly sense what is a jew right most people understand the jew as a bloodline descendant of abraham through isaac and Jacob, who keeps the Torah and potentially other additional traditions and is only a Jew at birth, okay? They may not even observe the Torah, but by blood they are tradition considered a Jew, right? You may hear, oh, I've got a bit of Jewish in me, you know, um, you know, or, or you haven't got any Jewish in you, so why are you doing all that Jewish stuff? You know, <laughs> these are some things you might have heard, you know. Uh, if someone, whatever, walk down the street and someone sees me with zitzit on, they might say, oh, you know, are, are you a Jew? You know, so that, that, that's, that's, that's the understanding. But the biblical definition of a Jew, it depends on what page you're reading on in the Bible. Again, January for South Africa and for England, different context, um, but both are true. Okay, so a Jew was originally a descendant of Abraham through Isaac and Jacob and his fourth son, Judah. Okay, and the first mention of this is in 2 Kings chapter 16 verse 6 and it's referring to the citizens of the southern kingdom of judah following the split from the northern kingdom of judah okay a people group mostly made up of the tribe of judah but benjamin was in there the levites as well as a remnant that fled idolatry okay and then another okay so that that's point number one that a jew could be point number two reading over a thousand years later in the gospel accounts during Christ's time, the term Jew was a generic term for those who had returned from the Babylonian exile and who was worshiping the God of Israel who were living in the land of Judea, okay? Okay, as opposed to the Jews living in Galilee who were called Galileans, okay? So we're seeing, depending where you read in the Bible, a Jew can mean different things. It's all context, both are true, okay? Lastly, Jews during the gospel account could be also mean Jews living in the rest of the Roman Empire, known as the, um, um, the, the, the Spora. Um, Yeshua and all his disciples and earlier followers were actually Judean, okay? Or the Spora Jews and, and some Galileans also, okay? So that's what, it, that's what a Jew is, okay? Uh, um, by the definition of the Bible. And the worldly definition of an Israelite then, okay, the common understanding is that a traditional Jew equals an Israelite, Israelite and Jew are interchangeable. You know, that's how the world sees it. Where biblically, they're a little bit different. A Jew and an Israelite are quite different, okay? Um, but the world sees them as one of the same. And then a Gentile definition, okay? The worldly definition of a Gentile. A Gentile is anyone who is not a Jew by blood, okay? That's what the worldly perceive it as. But these two definitions, according to the word, are wrong, okay? A biblical definition of a Gentile is those of the nations who were not Jews by birth or conversion, 
by definition, a Gentile is a person outside of the covenant promises of God, okay? One who has not made the God of Israel their king. That's what a Gentile is. One who's saying, you're not sovereign, Abraham, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay? So how do we know this, okay? We've got to read Ephesians 2 again. This is a brilliant scripture, and we can reverse engineer it a little bit, okay? So Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. Therefore, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles in the flesh, so formerly you are Gentiles in the flesh and called uncircumcised by the so-called circumcision that done it in the body by human hands. Remember that at that time you were separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers of the covenant of promise without hope and without God in the world. Okay, so a Gentile is without Messiah, aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers to the covenant, without hope, without God, not saints, not members of the household God. I don't know about me, but I don't want to be a Gentile. You know, I don't want to categorise myself into that list. Mm -hmm. um, and there's no such thing as a believing Gentile. Yet yeah, we was, there is a Gentile, you know, um, in, in, in the past, you know, we know that Abraham, he was a Gentile, wasn't he? He come, he come from um, Terah's household, who was, who was pagan. Um, you know, but what, what I'm trying to get across here is that, and there's no such thing as a believing Gentile. A person who doesn't believe in the covenant, um, <clears throat> a Gentile is a person who doesn't believe in the co covenant. And then there's an Israelite, one who is not, no longer a stranger to the covenant, okay? A fellow citizen through being the commonwealth of Israel. So let's tie it all together. What's the biblical definition of an Israelite then, okay? What do we see as a biblical definition of an Israelite? Number one, a descendant of Abraham through Isaac and Jacob, known as Israel, okay, Jacob known as Israel. At Mount Sinai, this was expanded to include those of a mixed multitude, okay, the Melo Goyim, the mixed multitude was the Egyptians and the other nations who saw God's power at Pass before Passover and once again, okay, these came into the covenant with God of Israel be before uh, becoming Israelites, you know, everyone who went into the land, into the promised land with Joshua was Israelites, okay, it can mean and then the second point, it, um, an Israelite, it can mean a citizen of the northern kingdom of Israel, you know, if you're reading Kings. So again, it depends on the context, you know. Um, but what, what does it mean to us? Okay, what does Israelite mean to us? Where, where are we going with this? So an Israelite is the children of God who are part of the prophesied regathering of the exiles, including the Jews and those from the northern kingdom, plus the ingathering of the former Gentiles into the full covenant citizenship status through the completed work of the Messiah in preparing the way for all who desire to come into covenant, okay? So the term um, Israelite is, is someone who wants to be a part of the covenant, someone who says, I'm in, you're, you're my God, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm, I'm, I'm doing what it takes to come in. And, we see the term spiritual Israel um, or spiritual Israelite. That isn't actually ever really mentioned in the Bible, you know. Um, some people don't like using this term for that reason. But personally, you know, I'm okay with that term because I understand the concept. We may not be physical descendants, but we are grafted in spiritually. The correct biblical term is belonging to the commonwealth of Israel or just simply an Israelite, you know. So an Israelite isn't... It's nothing to do with blood, okay? It's nothing to do with blood. You know, someone say, oh, you've got a bit of Jewish in you. I don't care if you've got Jewish in you. Do you know the Messiah? You know what I mean? <laughs> to, to, to clarify, I'm not saying that we're Jews. You know, we were born Gentiles, you know, as far as we know, like Abraham, like Caleb, like Ruth. You know, we don't know the percentage of blood in our blood. Um, you know, but we was all born not attached to the covenant, okay? And we all have the opportunity to take part in the covenant. You see, Jews do have their advantages, as Paul shared with the Romans. They have an understanding of the Torah. They have an understanding of the covenant. Although they are like anyone else, they need the Messiah. You know, so it doesn't matter if you're 2% Jew, 10% Jew. It doesn't matter. You need the Messiah, okay? And you're, the only, you're only a true Israelite if you call upon the Messiah. He's the king. He's the king of Israel. How, how, how can you be an Israelite if, you, if, if you're not worshipping the king of Israel? How can you be a citizen of Israel if you're not worshipping the king of Israel, the ruler of Israel, okay? And the scripture confirms this. We know this one. 
John 14, 6, and it's, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Everyone needs it. Everyone, you know, Father through except through me. All need to come through the door. There's only one gateway to God. There's only one door to God, and, and that's through the Messiah. The, everyone needs the Messiah. No one is exempt. He who is not with me is against me. Yeah. Uh, he who does not gather with me scatters. Mm -hmm. You know all them scriptures as well. Yeah, yeah, ex exactly, brother. And, 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 and the crux of all this is that there's an identity crisis going on. Okay, okay. Saints, there's an identity crisis in the church. See, the deceiver is guilty of identity theft, yeah. leading astray the saints to what these terms mean biblically, okay? Stealing of us the blessing of observing the feasts, observing the Sabbaths, the commandments. The enemy, the accuser, doesn't want us to be blessed, okay? He says, right, you've, you've proclaimed Yeshua, okay? I can't stop that. What else can I do now? I can stop you from being blessed. Mm -hmm. How am I going to do that? I'm going to twist a few terminologies. Yeah. I'm going to set this up. Okay. We, we was having a discussion on the podcast. You know, I don't like dating. I like courtship. You know, I don't like engaged. I like betrothed. I don't like married. I like covenant. Why? Because the world says married and you can marry two men. Yeah. But yeah. in the way that says, you know, a man is for, for a man and a woman come together and come one flesh, and that's what a covenant is. Yeah. You see, these words have been changed, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and we need to kind of unlearn what we heard outside. And you know, I, I, I do understand when people say to me, are oh, all that Jewish stuff? Because it's only what they've been taught, it's only what they've been grew up on. But as we can see here, it's not, it, it, that's not true according to the Bible, you know. Um, the Sabbath and the feast days, they're just for the Jews. They're done away with, oh, you need to stay away from all this Jewish, Jewish stuff. Well, according to the Bible, that's not true. Could I share with you, please, the Bible interprets, um, the, how the Bible interprets the feasts. You know, they're not Jewish. They are biblical and they're for the citizens in the household of God. They are for the commonwealth of Israel. Israelites, one who was in covenant with God through Yeshua. Yah's feasts. Yah's feasts. So when someone says, you know, all that Jewish stuff, no, this is biblical. This predates Judah, <laughs> okay? We observe them not to be saved through works, but because we love him and we know he's coming back soon as the bridegroom. He doesn't want a bride who breaks covenant by observing pagan festivals. So we observe his festivals that are a dress rehearsal of the coming wedding feast. Would you like to know more? Thank you.